Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Alex, it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States, where they call it the uh, left coast, I guess, is Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, you sound chipper. Last time we, last time we were talking about the Beatles and their concerts, and. Uh, and I started to think, do you, where were you when uh, John Lennon got shot? Because I always remember. Where... Well, I was in San Francisco. Oh, you were out here by then. I was in San Francisco, and um, uh, it was a shock to me because I knew John. And uh, it got me so depressed that I actually i would come out to go to work for uh, KMEL. And uh, they, um, uh, I was so depressed by it that I... Um, that I that I oh I, I know what it was I had quit KMEL I told them I just I'm 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 homesick I have to go back to New York I just can't I can't stay here and then John was killed and I went back into my boss and I said do you mind if I stay because <laughs> I don't want to go back to New York now it just represents death life is short and then you die. And when you want to feel good about that fact, you go to Larry Bubbles Brown. He will always give you wisdom. Right, Larry? Speaking of death, I just, uh, I'm listening to radio before you called, and uh, this is Larry King's doing some prostate commercial. And, it, wait, 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 hold on a second. for a week. <laughs> He's been dead for a week. They were still running his prostate thing? They're, they're still running his commercials, yeah. Usually when somebody dies... You take their ads off the air immediately. You know, you don't see... You think. Well, I mean, you don't see what's-his-name from Jeopardy, Alex Trebek doing his insurance ads right now, do you? <laughs> no. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, poor taste at best. Poor taste, yeah. Um, he died recently. Who is Alex Trebek? Anyway, I bet I bet he used to get that joke a lot when he would when they would, uh, <laughs> you know, they would go up to him and say, "Are are you are you Alex Trebek?" And he'd go, "Probably uh, yes, I am." But that's only because you put it in the form of a question, you know. Um, Talk about a long run. That uh, he might hold the record for game shows. Well, I uh, I don't know. Let me think about that. I think so. Well, you know what we do? Echo, what host had the longest-running game show? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. Hmm. Okay. It was Alex Trebek. Jeez. See? See? Isn't that amazing? Larry Bowles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, knows everything. No, uh, <laughs> no. Alex Trebek was. I, I remember seeing him doing Jeopardy in the mid seventies. So uh, yeah, mid seventies. Yeah, yeah. Before that, who was the host before that? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, what? Is don't name? tell me it was. Uh, wasn't Mervyn Bennett Jeopardy? Right. Mervyn Bennett Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, his wife invented. His wife invented Jeopardy. Uh, she, oh. she, they were driving along one day and he was trying to think of a game show to do. And she said, uh, you know, all these, all these, uh, places ask you to give them an answer. Why don't we have a show where you ask, you have to ask a question. And so they came up with that format of, of that. They, they give you the answer. You have to supply the question. Uh, and, uh, that, uh, that was it. And they, they were driving down the road when he came up with that one. So. You know, he always used to love to tell that story too. Uh, no, it was a, a, a who who was the first? 
I used to know this. See, there it goes my mind. Was it, was it somebody well known or not? Well, wait a minute. Art Fleming. Art Fleming was the Art first Fleming. host of Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. He was the host of Jeopardy for, gee, maybe 10 years or something. Well, Echo, how long did Art Fleming host Jeopardy? Here's something I found on the web. According to Genius.com, the original host of the U.S. TV game show Jeopardy, Fleming hosted from 1964 to 1975. Okay, so we got 11 years there. Ah, you're right. Could you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, you're dripping with knowledge yourself. No, my my Alexa is. So. <laughs> well, you you said he'd been on before uh, you knew that. Yeah, but I knew it was our. I, it, when it, once I cleared my mind, I came up with the Art Fleming. 54. Yeah, thirty six. So that that that, that show's been on for fifty six years. Well, no, because it was off for a while, and then it oh, came okay. back with Alex Trebek. You see, so. I, it was off. I, I don't know how long it was off for. Um, here, here, hold on a second. Uh, Echo, how long was Alex Trebek the host of Jeopardy? Here's something I found on the web. According to popculture.com, Trebek has been okay. the host of Jeopardy for 35 years, starting, starting in 1984. Starting in 1984. So what did we say was uh, the last time he... That uh, Fleming had it till sixty four. Seventy five. No, seventy five was it? Well, he said sixty four to seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah. So uh, seventy five. So it was off for about nine years, and then it came back. And uh, Alex Trebek had it ever since. You know. Uh, so, so Murr probably made probably one of the wealthiest men in Hollywood. Merv Griffin, yes, it, well, he was yeah. at one time. Then he died, and the, all his assets were, you know, sold to other people, other companies, and so on. I think Sony now owns Jeopardy, and well, he no, he sold all those shows before he died to the Coca Cola Company, and um, uh, he sold those shows, and he made a just a bundle out of it. And it was considered the the richest guy in Hollywood. You know. They always used to have, who was the richest guy in Hollywood? Okay, so who was the richest guy in Hollywood in the 1950s? Do you know? The 1950s? I'm, I'm talking about uh, actors. I'm talking about actors now or performers. Yeah. Actors or performers. Uh... uh I was going to say yep. John Wayne. Well, they used Wayne. to think it was Bing Crosby. Okay. But Bing said, no, I'm a, just a piker compared to... Bob Hope? No. You'll never get this one. Fred McMurray. Somehow, Fred oh, McMurray, wow. he invested in real estate in, in L.A. early. And was yeah, I heard he put all his money into California real estate. Very, very wealthy, richer than Bing Crosby. Now, Bing Crosby, boo, 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 boo. Does anybody? Is anybody in our audience remember Bing Crosby? Because they should. He was very. <laughs> he was. He was maybe the most popular performer in the world. All right. Really? Yeah. I just remember the name. I didn't know he was that big. Really? You you're that young that you don't remember Bing Crosby? Wasn't he in the forties? Forties, fifties, sixties. You know, he kept he kept he kept going. You know, you ever see the movie High Society? That was made, I think, in the fifties. Um, but anyway, uh, he uh, he invested in a lot of things. Remember Minute Maid orange juice? Mm -hmm. That was his. Okay, he owned that. Um, now I'll give you one that you really go crazy over. So a guy, he's doing his radio show in L.A., and he hates doing the radio show because he's, he, he, to begin with, he always pre-recorded them. So how they would do a recording of a show in those days is they would do it on disc. But he didn't want to do it in one take. He wanted to do it in several takes. So they would make discs of all the takes, and then somebody later on would go in and take all the discs and play them one after another, making a complete show. 
Get me? Get what I'm saying? That's how they would do mm -hmm. a show on disc if you wanted to, like, edit it or whatever. There was no other way. And this guy comes to him and says, listen, set me up with a line from your show uh, to the hotel across the street. Uh, I will record your show. Then you tell me how you want it edited, and I'll have it back to you in an hour. So Crosby goes, okay, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on this. So they do that, and the guy, he then, they call the guy and say, here's what we want. We don't want this in. We want this out. We want this in. We want this out. An hour later, he comes by, and he says, I've got a recording of it. And so they go back to the hotel where there is this machine. And he had recorded the thing on magnetic tape. And uh, Crosby said, how much to buy into your company? You know, because he just he heard this thing, and it was perfect, plus the sound was better than the sound on the transcriptions. He, he, and the guy said, uh, he said, I want to buy into your company. And I think he bought something like, I don't know, 50% of Ampex or whatever. And this was Ampex, is what it became. Ampex, okay. Yeah. And uh, he made a absolute bloody fortune off of that because as soon as ampex came out with the tape recorder all the radio stations dropped the idea of making transcriptions and everything was tape okay uh so that's how crosby got part of the uh the company and he was he was the first show ever to be edited on video on audio tape now you want the history on how they built the first tape recorder they didn't sure. they didn't the Nazis did. What happened was this guy who started Ampex uh, was with a unit during World War II that parachuted into Germany because what they wanted to know is that Hitler was giving speeches, but he was giving them when they knew he was somewhere else. So they wanted to know how they were putting these things out live and he wasn't there. So they parachuted into Germany, and they took over a radio station. And they went inside, and here were these three of these machines. And they were tape recorders. And what they'd really? been doing is t taping his speeches and then playing them later. Okay? So they liberated three of these machines and took them back but behind uh, on the other side of enemy lines and they didn't only gave him two of them he kept one and took it back to redwood city where he what? then really? wow. where he then reverse engineered it so he could understand how it worked okay and built his own version of it and it became ampex so that's that's ampex which uh when you drive down 101 past Redwood City, they still have a sign. They, do they still have? I think they're still in business in some way, shape, or form. I didn't know they were, but you see the Ampex is right off 101. Well, you know, i got to tell the audience who's listening that in radio, you know, you went into any radio station and there were Ampexes. In fact, you didn't even refer to them as uh, tape recorders. You referred to them as, uh, uh, go put this on the Ampex. You know, it, Ampex was just the word for tape recorder. And uh, I think oh, anybody like who made them after that had to also pay royalties to Ampex. So uh, it was a, a major company. And then they came up with the video tape recorder. Uh, so that was their next big invention. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's just that newer technologies kind of slowly put them out of work. And now, of course, who even uses tape? You know, this thing isn't being taped. Well, they came up with the VCR. No, they came up. No, they didn't come up with the. They came up with the videotape recorder, big giant machine that okay. would record TV shows. They didn't come up with the small one that went into your home. What happened is the Japanese came up with a better way to record video, which was using I won't even explain a helical scan, which it went around a rotating drum in order to make the size of the tape, uh, at least in theory, bigger. I don't know if you can understand that. But it would record the signal diagonally across the tape. All right? And therefore, where you would only have like a half an inch, or maybe, yeah, half an inch of tape, 
If you did it diagonally, it was the equivalent of two inches of tape, which is what Ampex used, these big two-inch reels. So the Chinese figured out a way around the way we were doing it. And uh, the, the home VCR now, to this day, if you still have a VCR, if you look inside, there's a drum. And it's a helical scan drum. So, Did I inform you of anything that was interesting there? Yeah, you, you were probably one of the first people that had a VCR. Was I close to it? Close you must to have been. it. Well, you like gadgetry. Yeah, I like gadgetry. Uh, uh, and I think when I buy that, I didn't buy a Betamax. I waited because Betamax only had, see, here. here is, uh, we'll go a little bit over. I don't mind. Uh, it, it, the reason why Betamax didn't catch on and VHS did, if you may remember, there were two competing I do remember flavors. That, yeah is because you can only record one hour on a Betamax, which was a stupid move on their part because stuff that people wanted to record sometimes was longer than an hour. Football games, specials on TV, things like that, you know. So to only be able to record one hour was a drawback. So here comes VHS with a slightly bigger cassette, and they could do two hours. And then they put in different speeds so you could slow it down for less quality and you could get up to six hours on a tape. Meanwhile, there's Betamax with one hour. Which one are you going to buy? You know? Yeah. So they had a treble. So they then have their speed and they got it up to two hours and then they you have their speed again and they got it up to four hours, but it was always that VHS was always one step ahead of them. And then they tried putting thinner tape in there so the tapes were longer. And it, But Beta could never catch up to VHS for length of time of recording. And that's what people wanted. You know, so. There, in a nutshell, is the history of videotape, ladies and gentlemen. I love that. Cause, uh, kind of, that kind of saved the movie industry because uh, a movie could lose money on, in the theaters, but they could still make it back with the uh, videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that was definitely a, a, a godsend for movies. But in the very beginning, the movie companies didn't want to do it. They weren't used to giving their films away. You know, in those days, if you had a copy of their film, you could be arrested, mainly because uh, every film was a cop, a, 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 a was uh, owned by the the movie company, and. Um, you know, they didn't want to then start giving their films away or putting them in a form where they could be copied or whatever. And they were very reluctant at the very beginning. They came up with all kinds of ways to prevent you from doing that. Um, and uh, uh, finally, they gave in, and it was the best thing they did because they wound up seeing this just this cash flow they hadn't seen before when it came to videotape. So, uh, you know, they, then they had trouble with the rental stores. Because a rental store buy one, and they rent it out, you know, five million times or whatever, and the company wouldn't be making money off of that. So then they tried to come out with uh, a version of the rental store copy that they had to pay like a hundred dollars for per copy, but that didn't work either. So they 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 flutched around. They they it's just that they were working on with old modalities for making money and uh they weren't willing to give that up and once they did they were suddenly realized hey we're really going to make a lot more money this way okay so history of videotape history of video rentals uh, yeah i do hmm? i remember video stores just popping up on every corner in oh, the mid 80s yeah. oh yeah all they had to do was go out and buy a copy of each videotape but to see the trouble was the movie companies weren't making money on those rentals and that was what irked them greatly especially in the beginning later on because there were so many vcrs in the country they knew they could just put it out and if they found a nice sweet price point for the tapes like i think 1495 or something like that that they could then sell them you know there's a point at which people would rather own the film than you know than rent it or even copy it from some friend uh, they want a nice pristine copy and you give it to them and if you give it to them at a good price point they'll buy it but if you're trying to sell them for like 
you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, nobody's going to buy. They're going to go steal them. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the history. Uh, of, uh, and hey, I, I hope everybody's enjoying it. I knew you'd it. know that. That's what I love about <laughs> talking with you because you drag this stuff out of me. And then I say, gee, we well, didn't. The, and after the uh, VCR, I remember that you were the only one I knew. I thought they were so cool. You had the uh, laser discs. Oh, yeah. They were The size great. of a record album, I think. Yeah, they were, they were the, they only got one hour on a side, but they, it was double-sided. So you just turned it over and watched the second side. And later on, they came out with machines that would automatically play the other side. And a laser disc at the time was the best delivery system for video. I mean, it was pristine. And then, oh, so sharp, yeah. then the DVD came out, and it was smaller, and it was all on one side, and uh, you know, laser disc was out the door when that happened. So, you know, uh, so another another educational portion of our program, uh, <laughs> courtesy of Larry. You learned as well, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I say here's Larry Bubbles Brown, and then I talk for fifteen minutes. What am I? What is this about? You're supposed to do jokes and. Tap dance. But you're more interesting, so I'd, we'd, uh, we'd rather hear oh, you. Oh, thank you for the compliment, Larry. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, we better go. Got to gotta talk to some other people here. But uh, uh, okay. uh, we'll do this again in, in, in another week, okay? Larry. After the Super Bowl, yes. That, well, way after the Super Bowl, when this runs. Uh, <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. C'est Gabney, la grande broadcast never cam, Ricain, par les radios comme vous n'en avez jamais entendu. Mm, it's our, this for our French speaking friends. How are you? Good evening, everyone. What's happening? Okay. Uh, we're just here to do another, another show. I started running the wrong Larry Bubbles Brown tonight. I ran the one from last week. So while it was playing, I switched over to the other one, and basically you couldn't tell anything <laughs> had happened. That's how similar every one of our Larry Bubbles Brown segments is. In fact, I'm thinking of maybe not doing them anymore and just playing old ones. I mean, why should I, you know, spend my time doing that, right? Right, right. Anyway, I'm not wearing the plaid jacket tonight. I figured I'm I've enough, with, enough with the plaid. I'll, I'll be back with it again next week. Okay. Anyway, um... Anything to talk to you about? Not really. Not really. I mean, nothing interesting happens in my life. Oh, the uh, the guy who was supposed to work on our dishwasher dryer didn't show up the, today. That was exciting because I could sit there and gripe about it, you know, whatever. So, But that was it. That was it. Uh, what's going to happen is going to wind up costing us like $500 to not fix this washer dryer, and then we're going to have to buy a new washer dryer. You watch. Okay. That's the that's going to be what's going to happen. Anyway, time now. Boy, the show gets boring when I, that's all I can talk about is that the washer repair guy didn't show up. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk to our people here. Let's go to our Zoom panel. Uh, I just hit admit all, and they're all popping in there like crazy. There we go. Uh, we got uh, we got Charlie Wallace, and we got uh, Alan, and we've got Dan Meyer, and we've got me. Okay, so Trucker Steve is trying to get in. Trucker Steve is uh, he's uh, there, but he oh here, here he is now he's joining us. There he goes with his sidekick Rocky, which uh, Rocky. doesn't fit all in that writing there. There he is. There he is. Where are you tonight, uh, Trucker Steve? Where in this wide world of sports are you? Let me guess, Vancouver. Vancouver. Huh? Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. you were right, Alan. Well, how did you figure that out, Alan? Because of where he was last night? Uh, because as a cop, you learn to listen. And last night, he said he was driving to Vancouver today. I see. Okay. All right. Well, that, 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 that. oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just remembered. Sorry. No, I don't see Robert signing in here tonight. So apparently, he doesn't want to give up with the minutes. Yeah, well, he's just, he 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 uh, he quit anyway doing the minutes. It's said. just yeah. starting time, you know. Give him a minute or two. Oh, I'll give him a minute or two, but you know, he, he's got to figure out how to use the computer again. I uh -huh. see. I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, I looked at the show last night. It looks much better now that I've upped the uh, the resolution. Um, yeah. I don't know. If I didn't you, notice. Did you look at it, Charlie? Look at what the show? Yeah. I just when I'm on it here. I don't oh. Usually... Yeah, because I the resolution last night was just it was getting much better. So what I did is I'm I, you may notice I've changed my camera. It's a little more of a close up. Yeah. What are you trying to do, Dan? That's one of the rules we oh, have I, here. Uh, it, uh, it, it, oh, oh. I, I, I was jealous of Ray, so I went out and bought a new <laughs> house today. This is my new home, what do you think? Oh, wow, that's nice. Well, if it weren't that you're transparent all over the yeah. place. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what a strange side effect of the you know, of I my mean, new home purchase. Yeah, but I hate it when people do this. This is one thing. All right. It's okay, the one thing. Okay. No, it's the one I thing about that. Zoom I absolutely yeah. hate is the yeah. fact that people can put these these little backgrounds and stuff. In case people well, don't know okay, what we're talking about. I'm in case Sorry they didn't know what that. we're talking about, <laughs> here's here's an example of some of the things we're talking about here. Let's see here. You showed them last night. No, I didn't. It was a couple the of Alex nights. Rumble thing and the no, no you, and... that was a couple of it was about a week ago. It wasn't last night. Okay. Okay. So there we go. How's that? That's nice. Mm -hmm. But be, you see what happens like, um... is your head kind of well i'm i got a lot of light on me so it works kind of better than it works for a lot of people who don't have a lot of light yeah you know with the higher resolution camera maybe you ought to lower the light i should lower the light i don't know no, the light no the light is the light is right where it should be actually okay uh, it's hard to make out your facial hair and then with that see I can, I can do this <laughs> is, you know see um, uh, mm -hmm. And if I want, if I want to be really egotistical about it, I can do this. Oh, right. yeah. Alex, when you used to do your old TV show, you could put you can put videos on there, so you could put those Russian dash cams. Yes, I could do the yeah. dash cam thing. I, Russian, mean, well, I, Russian I, I dash ordered, cam. I ordered a green screen. Oh, is that going to be yeah. annoying, right? No, oh, I, I ordered annoying. a green screen, not necessarily to use on this program. Uh, but just to you know, use in general, and so I I got a uh, uh, a green screen. I'm getting a green screen, and uh, I could do that. You know, I could do the thing with the Russian. I used to take the, the they had dash cams in Russia, right? Okay, and I put the dash cam on, and I would just you know I pretend like I was driving, mm -hmm. and it, it, it you know, because the dash cams are on the front dashboard, mm -hmm. so I had all these things of people missing cows or crashing into other cars and things like that and I'm, i might do that i might uh, one night do well we, maybe you can educate me alex what why is it a green screen why not a blue screen well no it is when i when we were doing um uh our show out of a studio uh at the when we first started this out uh we used a blue screen that was blue but uh, it turned, yeah, uh, there's uh, Jeff. You've got your audio up. Uh, somebody's got YouTube on. You just kill the YouTube, kill the YouTube, and you won't be able to, you know, just stop YouTube. There you go. See, if you just stop YouTube, that was easy. Yeah, uh, anyway. Um, um, I uh, so we used a blue screen there, and and the reason the blue screen is old fashioned actually. Okay. Um, here's the reason why you don't use the blue screen. Uh, let's say you come onto my show and I'm using a blue screen for my background and you're sitting there wearing jeans. Yeah. What okay. happens to your pants? In some cases, the bottom half of your body disappears. Okay. Okay. Because what happens in case people don't know is a blue screen or a green screen, anything that isn't that color comes through and everything that is that color doesn't come through it's well, that, transparent. that explains what, what's going on then I've and well what happened that. was because so many people were showing up wearing jeans although now i found i could wear jeans and still be okay all right oh but, we like your polka dot uh hmm? sleeping stuff that you wear what what do you don't don't you normally wear your nighty night stuff you mean this stuff here this is wait a minute hold on well, a i can't uh, see it right there now. you go yeah there you go yeah I, I couldn't show it to you easily because I've got a close-up on me now. 
Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, 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 the um, so what happens is is that people would show up wearing jeans and stuff. And today I find you could use jeans, and it's the chroma key is pretty good where it specifically goes for a certain chroma. All right. Mm -hmm. So I could wear jeans, but uh, the, the, to save that, that became a big problem. Most people don't show up wearing green. You know, okay. I mean, when's the last time you wore? Well, you're wearing green tonight, aren't you? Is that green? I, that I shirt see. is it green? Well, that wouldn't show. That would we would still I'm be. Not green. You'd be able to use Sorry, a green it. screen, green screen, and you wouldn't have a problem anyway. That's green. But I'd have a blue Florida screen. I'd, blue I'd, I'd have a problem with blue screen with the shirt. You know, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Mm. That explains that. I've never. I don't know much about photography. Yeah. I mean, so. you could use that. a. You could, for all you, it matters. You could use a red screen. But the trouble is that your face has reds in it, yeah. and yeah. that could cause a problem. So the most common thing, the green didn't usually conflict with most people of what pe people were wearing, okay? Okay. Yes, John. Remember that time when Melania wore a, a green dress, yep. and then everybody did the memes with you know, did, did the, uh, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. put mm -hmm. videos on her dress and shit. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you could make her look naked. You could do a lot of things. Angel yeah. Menendez. Uh, no, it doesn't sound good, does it? Angel. Hey, did you hear the latest about Melania? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Angel Mendez. Does that sound uh, spooky? I'm... Sounds yeah. like someone that tried to get on before. Huh? Sounds well, we like could, somebody that tried to get on before. Be a naked guy or something. What did we get do yeah. is we get <clears throat> we get put them on, put put them on for guy. a second. If they don't say hello immediately, mm -hmm. I get rid of them. Not right. Okay, hold on a second here, folks. Right. Um, uh, uh, Angel, 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 Angel's not coming on. Just it just says joining, joining, joining. Um, Angel. No. No. Well, let's see here. How do I how do I get rid of them? Hmm. A name like oh. Angel. Up oh, there they are. Mendez. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I. Uh, Angel, are you there? No. Yes, I am. It, uh, okay, Angel. And uh, what it, what it, what what? Where are you calling from, Angel? Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Right. I I don't believe him. Taco Bell. I don't believe him. Goodbye. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he was switching on and off. I'm, yeah, I'm calling from Cleveland. And, right, he's calling from Taco Bell. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why they all use Spanish names when they want to do a, mm -hmm. a Zoom bomb on me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I guess this is getting to be the show to Zoom bomb. They'll get. When they, I guess you know that's a good thing. You know, we made it. Right? What do you mean it's a good thing? Is that you mean you got, <laughs> I'm going to say that all my listeners are people who want to bomb me? You know. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm Pellegrino. Mm. Mm. You know what happened to me today? See, here, nothing exciting happens in my life. Nothing. No. Today, what happens when you stay today the other exciting thing that happened to me in my life was I was going to order from uh, Instacart. They go over to Costco and they pick up stuff for me. Yeah. And when I was making the thing out, it said two hours. You know, it'll be delivered. You can get it delivered in two hours. And I'm going okay. I get it delivered in two hours. So I'm 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 going through the whole thing and looking for stuff to buy. Mm -hmm. And I fill it all up. I fill my card up, and I then go on go to check out, and it says can't deliver till Sunday. What? Uh, whoa! Whatever happened to two hour delivery? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was two hours at the time I started working on the cart. You know, so. Well, they realized. See, that's that's how cool. unexciting my life is, folks. You realize mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to wait till Sunday, get it on Sunday? No, because then they'll probably say Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> I, th I, well, I, think, I think what's happened. There was, do you know about the strike at Instacart? Yeah. yeah, they they yeah. wanted some people wanted to start a union at Instacart, and Instacart fired them all. Yeah, uh, yeah. that could be it. Cause... Be, being an old union guy, I was I was thinking about dump dropping them. You know, uh -huh. you know what I saw? Uh, I mean, what in San Francisco, um, over in South of Market, there's this warehouse 
and I noticed all these, um, um, you know, bicycle messengers and stuff were hanging around there and, you know, guys looking like they were DoorDash guys. Yeah. Turns out that DoorDash and Grubhub, they all shared this warehouse. So, like, when you order some food, the, the food goes from the restaurant to this fucking warehouse, and then it goes to your place. That's why the food, wait, whatever wait, you wait, order. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Instacart's a whole different. Oh, Grubhub you're talking about. Grubhub and DoorDash and a oh. couple of those places, they all share a warehouse. So the food doesn't go from the restaurant to you. It goes from the restaurant to a warehouse where another guy picks it up. Well, that, that, it. that doesn't seem right. Because what no, happens? That's let's, why let's, food's let's, always cold. I've never used no, it. No, forget about it even being cold. If you buy a steak and you say, I want the steak rare, and now it goes over to this warehouse and then it goes someplace else and finally it gets to you, it's been sitting in that, that plastic yeah. case yeah. baking on its yeah. own. So, it so, when you, so when you get it, no it's not rare anymore, it's beef jerky. You know. I, I think what I think I think it's possible that maybe all the bike messengers for Grubhub and whatever this other one hang out there and wait for an order, leave there, go pick up the order and make the delivery. Yeah. Well, in the case of Instacart, I think it has Probably. something to do with this uh, with this uh, yeah. unionization thing that's uh -huh. happening. I think well, a lot of Instacart people are just saying, "Hey, we're not going to deliver anymore." Uh -huh. Yeah. You know. I, well, I, I tell you, I worked for DoorDash for quite a while, and they, you know, the gig economy is nice, but, uh, you know, they they can just, they, they got rid of me right before the pandemic started. They laid a bunch of people off because we had uh, drive, uh, some traffic tickets uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I'm, I didn't know DoorDash delivered dope. They don't <laughs> deliver dope. Listen, I'm joking. I, found out, I found out the other day Instacart will go to my Costco and pick up drugs if I have them in the pharmacy there. All I have to do right. is create a thing so that they can do it. Yeah. Uh, here it says owner. This, Okay, this is probably just somebody we know who's using a machine they just bought. Okay? <laughs> Let me see who we've got here. It looks uh, like Tony to well, me. Well, we've got Tony. Yeah, oh, there Tony. we go. There's owner, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, owner. How are you, owner? Owner. Pretty good. Wait a minute. Hold Sorry, on a I don't know how to change my name. Well, then don't. You don't have to. I know I'll, you'll change it to I'll, asshole. I'll, 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 no, <laughs> no. Um, Let's go on the top corner of your screen where that blue square is, with the three dots. Yeah. No, I'm I'm doing it for him. Here we go. Here's his name now. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. You got it. Perfect. Okay. Blanche. Yeah, Blanche. Blanche. <laughs> Blanche from the Golden Girls. No, from Blanche from Streetcar Named Desire. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Alex has got it. I I always relied on the kindness hey, of strangers. Right? <laughs> crazy. Right. Hello, Tony. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Hanging in there. Your mom's not doing any better, is she? She's still dead. Okay. <laughs> Ouch. Oh my goodness. I'm so oh, sorry. Tony. I'm joking. But you see, no, 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 no. I'm stuff. glad he's making jokes. I mean, yeah, I was worried. Yeah. Yeah. I was worried about Tony. I thought when his mother died, he'd stuff her, put her in the bed again, and tell <laughs> the people know. at uh, Human Resources or whatever that is he's taking care of his mother. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, so wait, Alex. When he told you his mother died, did he? Did you say fine? I can't. I couldn't stand her anyway. No, I. I, I made, the last time I did that was for his aunt, and it made him cry. Oh. Yeah. So I'm. I. Well, I'm. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I meant to. When, when one thing I learned. One thing I learned in radio when you're doing a talk show, you don't want to make anybody cry. You do and not damn get the into that show better. You, what? Well, was, What'd you much. say, Jason? I said, damn you, Dan. I was going to do that joke better. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I ruined it for you. Anyway. So, how, you doing okay, Tony? Everything's fine. Yeah. Right? yeah. Evan, you know what? Uh, it's going okay. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's quiet. Me? I didn't realize how much she relied on me. Like, I, I went upstairs. And I'm upstairs. Well, you were, you were being paid to be relied, <laughs> know, relied but, on like, by her. Like, at night, Alex, she would always call me. Like, I, like, if I wanted to sit down, I was watching uh, a movie the other day that, uh, one of the ones you were talking about um, in Miami. Mm -hmm. I started to watch it, and I thought I heard her ca calling me. As it, it was the neighbor next door, yeah. and I didn't realize that I didn't really have. I mean, she always looked for me. I never had like a moment's peace. I don't mean it like in a bad sense. 
But like at night, it's like it's quiet. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's quiet. I'm going through the old photos, so it's kind of nice seeing stuff that she saved. Here she comes, saved a lot of stuff. Here comes Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Brian. Uh, Hello. Hmm. I'll, I'll tell you about something that happened today. I, we, I did have a little bit of excitement. I don't know if she wants me talking about this. I guess she doesn't mind. But I, I open, I wake up to a, a to a text that says, um, I had, my jaw was aching, and then it went down my arm and across my chest, and it felt like something was sitting on me. Heart attack. She said, I looked it up, it, it says it could be a heart attack, so she immediately went to our internist who is also a cardiologist lucky for us and he put her through a whole battery of tests and determined she hadn't had a heart attack okay. that it might be a pinched nerve or something like that that caused her Panic arm attack. to hurt and then her chest to hurt mm. but uh, she was very and I, when i and i'm reading this in a text and mm. she said and, oh by the way i sent that text also to my girlfriends mm. and i'm going i'm your husband you just thought oh, you were oh, having you're talking about Marjorie. Yeah, you were you thought you were just having a heart attack and you write a letter to your girlfriends an email hey, Alex, and you think a secondarily to, a... to send me a text about it? You've been upgraded to a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, I you know, I said you know, I would have liked to have known. I would have been down there in a second to take her to the doctor. I mean, I just and it worried me. I mean, I, you know, but it scared us for a while. But she, according to the doctor, he he's pretty good at this sort of thing uh, uh, because he's just a have to ask. Has she been stressed out about anything lately? Maybe well, she's married to me. Attack. What do you expect? I'm, I'm being serious. Like, you know, a panic attack. You know, if she might no. be stressed out about stuff. No, I, I don't know if that was a panic attack. I mean, it, no, everything he, she described. Alex would be the one in the family. With the everything panic. she described sounded like a heart attack. If she'd call me with those symptoms. I'd say, get to the doctor immediately. That's, yeah. that's exactly what panic attacks are, too, though. Yeah. I, I know sometimes you can't tell the difference. I should ask right. her. I mean, I don't know what she'd be panicky about, but it could. Well, then she came home Stress. and she got the the uh, arm hurting again and the pain across the chest, but then it's gone away with a lot of rest. Could be anxiety. Could be anxiety. I, I, Give you her know. a banana. Yeah, yeah. A banana. Potassium. Yeah. She's married to you. I mean, she, yeah. what's yeah. she going through? Yeah. What, what kind of stress could she be going through? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I think she was worried, Alex, that if she had to go to the doctor and take you with, mm -hmm. that you Take your digital thermometer. <laughs> yeah, but she. Uh, uh, but uh, but anyway, she's she's okay. I think you know it worried me. I hope and so. all these things go through my head. I had one one very selfish thing that went through my head. I said, well, you know something. The worst thing about her having a heart condition would be that that would be her excuse to make me always take out the garbage. <laughs> yeah, the Is that selfish? Here. That should yeah. be your job. You know, yeah. she'd go, oh, I can't take the garbage out. You know my heart. <laughs> you know, get that yeah, kind of that, thing. That's all, that's, this is all just building up to that. Yeah. Fuck your prostate. I have a bad heart. Well, no, right. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, what, one of the things that bothers me the most about women is that uh, if you do something bad, and all you guys know this, if you have wives or you have girlfriends, or you do something bad, wives, girlfriends, women, Never, ever forget it. Forget. They never forget <laughs> it. They're like, like elephants. Turtle. <laughs> they just never forget it. Okay, and so they use that. They put that in what I call Fifteen their. Fifteen years later. Yeah, there's this bank of stuff <laughs> that they can pull out of when yeah. you're having a fight or when they want something out of you. Like, uh, no, I can't take out the garbage. Remember the time I took out the garbage and you didn't. Say you would do it for me. Well, yeah, dear. The okay. Royal flush. The royal flush. Yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. Well, we got a bunch of people. You uh, do? Uh, do I even have it here? I don't know if I have it here. Uh, somewhere I should have it, but I don't. So I got some good news. What? Our company got our company got bumped up to phase one A. What do you mean? So we're what do you mean eligible for vaccination shots? What do, you mean? Yay. what do you mean phase 1A? Oh, so you well, get... That, you that's get... just their phase. Yeah, so we're essential workers and we make medical devices that are helping the COVID situation, so... Yay, yeah. you get your shot. 
yeah, so what, for us. Right. So flush. what is this? Is this a royal flush? <laughs> Did you say somebody say it was a royal flush? Yeah, it was twelve. <clears throat> okay, yeah. would that be a royal flush then? So. I imagine so. Okay, let me see here. Can I do it? But um, there we go. It's a royal flush, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> if we get one more, it'll be a jackpot. Hello, no cards on hello. Live screen. What? Well, yeah. With, with no cards Zoom, on how do you know when it's a full house? How many people can you get on here? Just well, it actually, it goes beyond that. I could on this yeah. one screen get twenty people. Well. Oh, cool. Yeah, but yeah. There, there's no cards on my screen. What do you that mean? was my thought. Thanks, John. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. there are no oh, no, there aren't any cards on your screen. You know why? You because I have to do it on my thing that sends it out. It's on YouTube. Oh, on my okay. switcher, I do it on. Okay. So it's on YouTube. See? See the card? See right there? Right above okay. the gab net, there's a royal flush. There you go. So while you were, while you were talking about women and how they remember things. Mm -hmm. Pam walked right by and gave us the finger. <laughs> Did she really? The number one or another finger? <laughs> that, one. No, that, that means you have one minute left. <laughs> you know. I guess I'm dead. At least she didn't say anything. At least you were quiet. That's good. That's right. So do I seem a little more personable to you tonight since I'm doing a close-up on me as opposed to the um, wide angle? You're so handsome. It doesn't matter, does it? Really? No. The, pi the pictures are really good. Yeah, my picture, we, we up the quality. You didn't, the 4K model, mm -hmm. there's a recall on, I went and looked, I was trying to install my software for my Logitech mm -hmm. C920 that was recommended. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bio, 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 or whatever, there's a big recall on it. And so if you've owned it, I think less than two years ago, there's a part of the circuit board that is prone to fail. I this is know. three years old and hasn't broken yet. Oh, is that, do you have the you know, bio? Why is it? You're always the bearer of good news. It's like, oh, you got one of those? You know, they've been recalled. Yeah. Yeah. Tell he's a friend of Phil. You got one of those? Well, I had a friend. He, he, burned, he burned his finger on it. That'd be down. Oh, the Moderna? Yeah, it's got some problems. You know, that's that's Alan. He's always the bearer you know, of you, bad news. Oh, your your you know, files. Yeah. In fact, I have two of these, and neither one of them has broken. Up. Or watch what you're but, doing. He'll tell on you. <laughs> maybe. Well, if yours are three years old, then they wouldn't be in this recall. It's only the past two years. Yeah, I, I think it's about three years. I I don't know how old it is. But you, it, you do look better though. I I like the close up better. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, really. It's more personable, <laughs> I think. Yes, I like it. See? Anyway, uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Charlie's got his hand up. Hello, Charlie. Yeah, I hadn't given my report tonight. Oh, yeah. you so know, I, I, for COVID I, I forgot. In fact, I'm yeah. tired. I want to go to sleep. I want, I'm just... 5,346 Americans died. What? 5,000. Did they? Going up? Did, new record. I was hearing yep. it was starting to go down. Didn't they say things well, were getting the better? Cases, there's only 93,000 cases, but over that's a new record for deaths. 5,300. 5, now, how far? All I care down about down is how down. far ahead now is California from New York. Is any of that a record? Uh, correction? It's over 600 ahead now. Huh? How many? Over 600 ahead. Now, you know where that might change is because they now found out that Cuomo was fudging the numbers. Is that true? About oh, the, really? nurse, the oh. nursing home numbers, oh. yeah, yeah, I heard that. Somewhere. And it wasn't, and it wasn't that it was some Republican ratting on him. It was his uh, sec his uh, uh, secretary to the governor, uh, yeah. Melissa wow. DeRosa. Gee, I remembered her name. Uh, a, a and, dishonest and, politician. Imagine that. And today, today, wait a minute. Today, this is what is amazing. He was supposed to have his normal press conference at like 11.30. Didn't go on. I think he wants to, uh, he's now trying to avoid people. They said that they didn't give the correct numbers on it because they didn't want the Trump administration to, to um, you know, exploit yell and it. Exploit it. Yeah. <coughs> I, that, I understand. Well, that, 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 yeah, but that falls right into the right wing. That makes like, it just uh, as bad. Yeah. 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 Like, see? Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Ray, <laughs> you got your hand up. 
I have a technical question, so maybe you're not going to want to hear it. It's, it's a tech- do you go, do you go from Zoom to OBS and then something else in between to YouTube? No. So it goes right OBS to YouTube? Yeah. How do you arrange everybody like that? I don't arrange everybody. Zoom does it automatically. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were do I thought you were no, doing No, I'm I'm taking the Zoom screen and I am rendering it into OBS under a okay. category called window capture. Okay. Right. Okay, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, window capture. And uh, the window capture um uh is what you're seeing on the air. Okay, oh, so I go, so I go from, from my Zoom here, window capture that window, okay, yep. put it into OBS, and from OBS, which is the software, folks, that does all the nice little things about, you know, switching, and like, if, you, if I want to go to me, I can go to me by just doing that, see, and that's, uh, that's all being done in OBS, okay? All right. Okay. And then back yeah. to them. So th- that's an example of what OBS does. Are we going to start talking about yeah, okay. RAV6 or whatever next? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I just woke up. What was that? I was. Is that we start talking about the RAV6 or well, RAV4 Somebody, or uh, he asked me Raid. about how I get it there. <laughs> I'm just being a smart ass. Raids and I'm how sorry, much up I and how much wanted... down you have. What? Say so how much down, how much up you have with the raids and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I won't do that. Well, I, I, know I just that, wanted to do something like but, this. Uh, I was you and Phil would go on and on about photography lenses or something. No, no. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. He would get into that. I wouldn't even <laughs> touch that with a 10 foot pole because I, I, and I know about that stuff. But, you know, I, I think that if you really want to lose an audience, you think that question that Ray asked me will really lose an audience. If you really want to lose an audience, start talking about F-stops. <laughs> In fact, we just lost three people when I said F-stop. <laughs> you did. Good. Wow. I get more G- mileage G-spot, out of G-spot, G-spot. I, G-spot. I get more. I get more more uh, mileage out of talking about my prostate than I would about you know, <laughs> or your eight second uh, orgasms. I thought it was five. <laughs> it changed a couple of days ago. Who had an eight second orgasm? Mark, I'll t- yeah, uh, listen, I, listen I, 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 it, it, that was a joke I made a few nights ago, and it's coming back to constantly haunt me. Mm-hmm. My problem oh, wasn't the eight-minute orgasm. It was the eight-hour orgasm. Yes, yes. Oh, that I God. enjoyed sex eight so hours. much, I felt that having an orgasm meant it was over. And so I just never, and women would go, have you finished yet? I mean, you know, really, I would go forever. And sometimes uh, you couldn't even, I couldn't even have one because I kept holding back, you know. Yeah. Edging. Yeah. I found that happen with chicks I didn't really like. What? Um, What'd you say, Jason? I found that happen with chicks that I didn't really like. Oh, I see. Okay. Maybe I wanted to fuck them, but I didn't really like them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If I liked them, then it was the five seconds. Oh, I see. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to wait. I want to fucking do it now. (laughs) Well, no, but you know, the idea is. Men are dogs. To me, orgasm minute was all over. And I enjoyed the process so much that I didn't want to have an orgasm. Not until I wanted to have the orgasm. (laughs) Right. Once she got once we started smelling fire burning because it was like putting two match sticks together, I figured it was time to stop. You know, we're rubber burning. Yeah, there's Kevin tonight. Uh, he is in his office. Doing he was here earlier. What, what? Of course, I know he was here earlier. I'm simply pointing him out so we can maybe hear something from him. By the way, what do you think they did today? The, uh, what do you think Trump's lawyers did today? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> if I hear the word, if I hear the word fight one more time, uh, ten minutes of that shit. You know, somebody has fight to like hell. Somebody fight has like to hell. tell them that the fight, word fight. fight can be used in a non-aggressive uh, yeah. manner. Yeah. You know, I'm fighting yeah. for the woman I love. 
Does that mean I'm going to go beat up the other guy? Yep. You know, I'm fighting for my right to party. Right for you. Yes. You know, uh, it was. Uh, I don't know. Those guys were. Did you hear that the lawyer? The lawyer was a. The lawyer is is a is a uh, injury attorney. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where do you find that guy? He's an ambulance chaser. Yeah. What do you expect yeah. Trump to you? Ambulance chaser. I'm yeah. waiting for Better Call Saul to get on there. Yeah, yeah. Saul. Bernie's there. Like Goodman. <laughs> Saul Goodman. But I don't know what they're doing, but yeah. I still, mm -hmm. uh, I still don't know how that how that vote's going to come out. It's still. So, I still think did you guys hear okay. about the phone listen, call? Listen, listen. Yeah, the hold, phone call too. Hold hold on. On. Do you think that will actually make a difference in people's opinion or no? What? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it'll, it will make a, a, a difference with those Republican senators, but it'll make a difference to the people that matter, which is the American public. Yeah. You know? But, you know, Plus, still, be still Trump is going to have these bragging rights. Well, I didn't get convicted. You know, they keep using twice. Am I wrong here or are they using the word impeachment all wrong? That they're, he's already yeah. been impeached. Yes, okay. Impeached. Which uh, it, impeachment is a conviction. Okay, yeah. uh, not a conviction. And a, uh, excuse me, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's like a grand indictment. Ju indictment. And jury indictment. puts out an indictment. Then that indictment is handed to the Senate, who votes on it. And when they find him guilty, they don't find him guilty of impeachment. And he hasn't been impeached. He's been found guilty of whatever he's been accused of. Yeah, the accusation. Yeah, well, and the lawyer, the lawyers are treated like lawyers. Are treated. If they the find lawyers are treated like a court of law, and it's not a court of law, it's a constitutional court. Wait a minute. Uh, John was saying something. John? If they find him guilty, he's he's called removed, and then they can disqualify him. But since he's already out, it, you know, you can't really remove him because he's already out. But that doesn't matter. You know, they can mm -hmm. still put a judgment. It's like a it's, it, it's not a, it's not a court of law. It's a political. Right. It's, it's, it, so it's not, it's not to get revenge against him it's to protect the fucking system yeah. of government that's what it is yeah. the whole no, okay, okay. I, wait a minute yeah. alan has alan has his hand up so i got to give it to alan first mm -hmm. yes alan so he has been impeached by the house yes and and the, what the senate does thank you twice mm -hmm. uh, what the senate does is uh it's like the grand jury yeah, oh, the, the yeah, house is the grand house jury. is like the grand jury. No, the house the that, house is like the grand jury. The indictment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I and, and that's that's and where I I hate this jury. argument about you yeah. can't impeach him but, after he's But he has been impeached already. He was, he, right. he was impeached when he was hey, in folks, office. Yeah. Now the trial is happening now. He has been impeached. He is now in the trial of his impeachment of his indictment is going on in the Senate. Yes, Charlie. Charlie, the problem is they're they're not really doing it like a trial because you've got senators meeting yeah. with the president right. and with right. his lawyers. With what Trump would happen lawyers. if the jury was meeting with the lawyers in a, in a real case? I mean, whoever, the, well, the lawyers would be thrown yeah. in jail. We have a we have an interesting situation here in which they're not only meeting with the lawyers in the case, and they're not only the jurors in the case. But they're also the witnesses to the but act. Th this is not right. a judicial process. Yep. This is a political process. Yes. Right. It's yeah. Political right. theater is what it is. It's well, look, just, it's uh, something. It's something we don't take lightly. We've only done right. it four times in history, and twice to the same guy. You know, mm -hmm. before this, it was Clinton, and before that, it was Johnson. Andrew Johnson. Andrew yeah. Johnson. There was another one too. 1800s. Uh, no. 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 I'd be saying Nixon. They uh, president, uh, president. Nixon was president. going to be Nixon impeached. Never got 1800s. Yeah. He, he, was, he, he No, there was never another one. Andrew Johnson. Was <laughs> there was Nixon said, I'm, I'm retiring. There was a what? Of what do you mean you're retiring? From what? Nixon said that. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Right. He right. just resigned. He just got out. I quit. Or, yeah. You know. But then he was oh, pardoned. You know, mm -hmm. do you want to like yeah. keep, still keep up that process of, oh, you know, you, you did all this bullshit and then we'll just pardon you and let you go. You know, no, it, it's, it's about time. We fucking hold our uh, leaders, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. hold them responsible to what they fucking did. Yeah. Well, but, but what you, what you're dealing with here is for instance, I, I don't know how any of these Republicans can say Trump is not guilty of anything. Oh. I mean, come on. He stirred you up. Know, the, especially he, when, he, 
He was sicking his people on them. You were the target. How can you sit there and say, yeah. I'm going to forgive you yeah. when you were trying to attack me? You know, I mean, I, 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 I just find it, imp you know, incredulous that the Republicans are, are acting this way. They, they're just acting purely on party lines, and uh, uh, they're not doing it on the facts. I mean, I think, you know, and, and it's not mm -hmm. because I'm anti-Trump and pro, you know, liberal, Biden. pro, Socialist. pro uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> pro, pro uh, Antifa, uh, but uh, it's <laughs> that I feel yeah. that the Democrats did a beautiful job of presenting their case. I mean, it, they gave them immutable evidence that they can't turn their backs on. And this excuse today they were using about, look at what went on in uh, Portland, Seattle. Well, who cares what went on in Seattle? It wasn't the same yeah. thing. That, that, that wasn't one branch of government well, but that was another a, branch of government. That was a Black Lives Matter situation yeah. in which people I, were fighting for their confused. rights. If you oh, excuse me, excuse me for using the word fight. They were uh, uh, aggressively asking for their rights. <laughs> yeah, any any anybody who makes an equivalency of those two, that's just saying I'm a big racist asshole. Well, I mean, but that's what and, they and were doing. Peaceful, yeah. It, yeah, it was a peaceful protest until the until the Trump's brown shirts showed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you want to look yeah. at it just realistically, all that shit happened under Trump too. I saw these. You know, these, oh, they want to make you forget what happened last summer. The Democrats yeah. want to make you forget what happened yeah. last summer. I'm um, sorry, last summer, Trump was a president, and that's what yeah. was happening. So his actual fault, too. So, yeah. Right. Brian, Brian, yeah. Brian, Brian, you've been quiet tonight. Anything? Did you see it today at all? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish somebody would just call out those senators who were running, like, you know, like scared what are you wearing? Pajamas? Call pajamas? them out and say, remember you, like you were saying, Alex, you know, they, those are the witnesses that were there. Yeah. Remind those guys. We were, when you guys were running with me up and down the stairs to get to safety, why were we doing that? How, who was calling that? Who was making the call to get into that building? Yeah. And then Trump was on the call and said, basically, fuck you. I have these guys. Don't care but he didn't, he didn't answer, answer the call. Other people answered and said, he doesn't want to talk to you now or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's having too much fun watching the, the well, riot. They said, they said uh, to the, they have a question and answer period afterwards. And they asked uh, one of the guys defending Trump, well, did Trump know about Pence, that he was in All as right. much trouble as oh. he was? And they said, no, he didn't. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter was that he was on the he was on the phone to somebody, or, or, or Tuberville, uh, huh? He was on the phone to Tommy Tuberville from Alabama, who said Pence is in the basement. Yeah, yeah they just evacuated him. Nuclear yeah, football, yeah. Right? So I mean, he yeah, they had the nuclear football. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder why the nuclear football wasn't with Trump. There's two of them. It was. Oh, there's there are two of them. Yeah, one goes with Trump, one goes with the vice president. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's the other guy that goes correct. into the secret room. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway. It's a backup. Anyway. I just thought that maybe Trump gave up on it. No, it's a backup. No, fuck with it. <laughs> they have it doesn't a backup. matter. It has to go through several people. I mean, even if he has yeah. a football, it still has to go through several people. Uh, and also Trump said, yeah. what good is it? You can't throw it. <clears throat> you know. Kevin's right. What? What he just said about the about the baseball, uh, the basketball, the football, <laughs> football. whatever, the yeah. nuclear the nuclear device, the, the soccer ball. There's 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 only uh, one of them at a time. I mean, it would be ridiculous to have two of them. Is then so, you would yeah. isn't, 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 is, isn't that isn't that isn't that the isn't general's got to uh, agree to yeah. do it too? Right, right. That I agree with you. No, gen, no general's going to agree to some nutcase telling them to pull the trigger yep. yeah well look at who was General attacking Ripley. the capital there's plenty of net cases in the military ray has his hand up ray oh I, the nuclear football yeah it does have to go through a couple of approvals but it, it can happen very fast because we have to be able to strike uh, yeah. before their missiles get here so yeah. uh but oh, isn't, yeah, but isn't somebody this... like trump is yeah, somebody like trump is saying pull the trigger and 
he's got the code and there's other people out there that got their brains together and saying, no, I'm not going to do it like a general. It ain't going to happen. This is, I, this think is, I think it's just like one general has to stop it. I think right. it goes, yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. But isn't this a throwback? Isn't this a throwback to some of the other era? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the, with the guy, somebody has to follow the, the president around with the nuclear football that with oh, all the... Uh, with all the communications we have now and everything, do you really need a nuclear football? I mean, can't he just get on his Probably cell phone not. and press a button? You know? Uh, no. No, you don't want him to do that. No. <laughs> How big is the... Has anybody seen it, the nuclear football? Because I know somebody was saying when they were showing the footage, there's the guy with a the code. nuclear football. Is it just a code? It's not an Basically actual device? Code. It's not a device. Well, I thought it was a it's briefcase. Like, what is it called? Oh, yeah, I understand. It's, a understand. it's a like and... a briefcase or something. Yeah. Uh, and, and, briefcase. and like on every every drama on TV, it counts down from 30. <laughs> Do you ever notice yeah. on, on television, whenever there's a bomb about to go off, never know it what starts it is. at 30. <laughs> if I were a bad guy and I wanted to blow up someplace, I would start the countdown at 5. Okay, why am I doing 30? So the good guy can like fiddle with it and figure out which wire you have to pull out. What is that? What is that? What is that, Brian? The The nuclear football. Oh, really? Like a bag, yeah. There's like a little communication device in there. Suppose suppose you drop it and accidentally triggers it. it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well. A stylus bag. It is. It's, it's, it's Louis Vuitton. No, I don't. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> yeah. Hermes. Uh, who, I need to wear a green shirt. You get answered a lot quicker. What? What's? What, what's that? What's that? <laughs> I had shirt? my hand up for a minute. Charlie. Yeah, that's oh, that's uh, that's Sterling wow. Hayden. That's Sterling Hayden in uh, Doctor Strange Love, and I I, I can tell you something about Sterling Dr. Hayden. General Ripper. <laughs> Yeah, but he was also what else was he? Did he play that you know of? The cop in uh, Godfather. God, that's right. He was a police chief in Godfather. Yeah. He was the hmm. first personality, major personality that I ever interviewed. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Really. He had hmm. uh, kidnapped his son oh. and taken him to the uh, to Tahiti on a boat called the Wanderer that he owned, hmm. and when he came back. They arrested him because he had custody problems with the wife and so on. Uh-huh. And uh, I, he was living in, he wasn't living in an office in, um, uh, in Tiburon, in an old lumberyard office. Hmm. And I called him up and said, can I come down and interview you? And he said, yeah. And I interviewed him. I mean, I don't have a copy of the interview now. Hmm. Uh, uh, and I imagine if I did, I would be absolutely embarrassed to play it because, you know, as a kid, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but he was the first major personality that I ever interviewed. So, wow. Cool. And he didn't kill himself afterwards? What's up with that? <laughs> no, no. Was so, this before uh, The Godfather or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fact, uh, when Alex was a kid. I'm trying to remember if this was before. Um, Doctor Strange Love. What? When was Doctor Strange Love? Anybody know? Anybody look it up? Seven, eight, six, seventy-one, seventy. No, I was no. in the sixties. Sixty-eight. Yeah. No, I was nineteen sixty. Had well, to be eighty-eight. No. Well, this was. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think I did this in the fifties. Mm-hmm. I think. Really. I seem to remember. Yeah, I was working at KTIM in San Rafael. That was before I went into the military, and this was mm-hmm. right after I got out of high school. So I'd say it was about fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Wow. And then the second person that I ever interviewed who was famous was Marlon Brando. Wow. He was out protesting the execution of Carol Chessman. It was the red light wow. bandit who yeah. was being executed at San Quentin. And he was out protesting it, and he walked by me, and I said, uh, Mr. Brando, do you mind if I talk to you? And he said, yes. And that's, <laughs> that's my interview with Marlon Brando. It, exactly <laughs> exactly one second, I think. Um, so. You need to wrap your microphone cord around his feet. Yes. Well, I learned that trick later on. <laughs> I used to do a show. You're going to love this one. I don't think I've ever talked about this. 
I used to do a show called The Man on the Street. They used to have a show we had at KTIM in San Rafael, 12.15 every afternoon, The Marin Man on the Street. And the owner of the radio station, Hugh Turner, would go down to the corner of, in front of the Rexall Drugstore, and that's where we had the unit that he used to, to send it back to the station. And he would stand out in the street and interview people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he would get a lot of people who just... You, can we talk to you here on KTIM? This show had more people saying no than <laughs> wow. any show in the history of radio, okay? Mm -hmm. But he learned a little trick he taught me about trying to tangle up the cord in people's feet so they would stop. But he had me go down and do that show for a couple of times, and it was, it was 15 minutes of hell, especially if you're new in the business. I can ad lib for 15 minutes now, but in those days, I was lucky if I could get out a coherent sentence in 15 minutes. Uh. And, and he would send me down there, I guess, as some kind of punishment to do the man on the street. You know, so that's that my. Sounds like uh, Mel Sharp. Yeah. Those were the Mel days. Sharp. I got to tell you, I grew up at a time when radio was really fun, you know, to do. <laughs> And TV I and wasn't I wasn't invented. It was yeah, fun I, to listen to. No, but then too. I would go back to the station and I would uh, be the announcer for the P Portuguese man, uh, Portuguese uh, uh, show that they did every day with Agnel Clementino, and I would introduce it in Portuguese, that was written out wow. for me phonetically, and then after that I would have to do a music show that was like a forty-five minute music show, and then we would go to something else. So you did everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And, How old were and, and you? I was 18 at the time, 17, 18. Yeah. And I mean, I learned the business. You know, I really learned the business, having to do everything. What I learned were a bunch of things that if I went in front of a, a class at a school somewhere and tried to teach these things, they'd have no use for. Okay. So that's why when people say to me, do you want to be a teacher in broadcasting? I say, no, because I, I can't teach them anything that's viable today. I could teach them how to do a man on the street broadcast. <laughs> you know, I could teach them how to do the uh, Portuguese voice of Marin. I could do that. Oh, that's not going to go over. You know, but I could also teach Dr. them how to interview. Strange Love was 1964. What, when was it? Dr. Strange Love was what? 1964. 1964. Yeah, so this was prior to Dr. Strange Love, and it was prior to. Uh, uh, to um, Godfather. Godfather. Yeah. 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 And um, first so, Godfather was 1972. Uh, yeah. 72 was it? Yeah. Then 1990. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Hey, New York had a, a man on the street. Wait a minute. Jason wants to say something. Oh, here. No, I, I was just going to say because you guys are saying Godfather. I, I tried watching it. I've never seen it. I tried watching oh, it. Really? And like after 10 minutes, I, I could not take it. I had to turn it off. Oh, man. Oh, wow. One of the greatest movies ever what? made. I, I, you, I, gotta, I, you gotta sit Maybe that's generational because no, you it know was something? so I got, I, I'll slow. I'll have to agree with so him. Slow. I'll have to agree with him. There are some movies that I've watched. People say, you gotta watch this film. And I get through 10 minutes and I can't watch the rest of it. And eventually mm -hmm. one day I get past that 10 minutes and it becomes really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I understand where he's coming Your from. Time will come. It's very slow in the beginning. You know, it doesn't grab you, but as it goes on. But then there was another one, up. like where they were making like their their uh, tomato sauce in a prison cell. I'm like, I. Well, that's good for I'm, them. I'm no, just they sorry, you make, know. No, wait a minute. They weren't making tomato sauce in a prison yeah. cell. They were making it in a mattress a place. No, no, where no, they had mattresses. Where they went to the mattresses because they were having a war against some other other uh mafia group or whatever uh, they were in prison and they were no, well they weren't in prison they that were god that was the good fellows no in good fellows. no in godfather <laughs> in godfather he says come over here to pacino yeah, i'm going to teach you how to make have... spaghetti and meatballs first you throw yeah, in the then and you throw in the meatballs mm -hmm. and the blah, blah, blah. right am i right that's jason right? yes yes that's yes, the yes, scene yes. you're talking that's about clemenza. wasn't it what, clemenza that wasn't in a prison you know. yeah yeah Yes, no, that man. was in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop fooling around with the. 
Pasta. You know By the way, we lost four listeners talking about The Godfather. <laughs> yeah, what? What? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope we don't lose anymore. Has anybody seen that new version of The uh, Godfather 3 that uh, Francis Ford Coppola did the, mm-hmm. the coda? I was, I was suckered into that, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, because I'm it's, sitting there going, well, how's he changed it? Yeah. Me Why and my wife just started, started watching The Sopranos. Tonight. And the ending, the ending of the old version was better than the ending of this version. Yeah, I agree. Where they go to a shot of him sitting in a chair in Italy or something, yeah. and then uh, it goes to black. Well, right. in the original Rest movie, he Tahoe. actually keels over and mm. falls to the ground. Yeah, the dead. Death of Michael Corleone. And the dog the comes over and starts yeah. licking his face. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant because that calls uh, calls back to uh, uh, Brando dying in The Godfather, where he keels right. over and the kid comes over and is like, you know, playing yeah. with him, thinking spraying that he's pesticide alive. on him. Yeah, spraying right. pesticide. What, what's, on him. Right. There's a new pesticide. version of The Godfather out. Pesticide. There's a new, no, there's a new version of the third picture. He re, uh, oh, Coppola re-edited. Sorry, I that think was an he, awful movie. I think yeah. it was looking it was for already. something to do in quarantine. And Sophia like, Coppola gonna, ruined it. Gonna... No, yeah. Sophia Coppola, I don't think ruined it. I think you're really wrong with that. I think that she, well, I think... I think she served the exact purpose she was meant to serve. And that is to play a really innocent kid, you know, whose father's doing horrible things with his life, but she is just naive and, uh, uh, to everything. And, and I think playing the naive kid, she was perfect at it. Who who's this? It was originally going to be Winona Ryder was originally going to play. Right, um, right. and then she got out she got pregnant. Watching. She got pregnant, pregnant, yeah. and right. uh, yeah. oh, you're you're talking about Coppola's daughter Stella Scher or Sophia Stella? Coppola. Sophia Coppola. Yeah. Right. Did you see her latest movie, The Thing with Bill Murray? Yeah. It's really very good. Very good. What? Yeah. What's it on? Is it well, streaming? Murray, I lost the it's on, uh, what's it on? Is I think it's maybe on Apple TV, but I may be wrong. What's the name of it? I can't remember yeah. now. That's how good it was. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what's a great movie if you get a chance to see it. It's One Night in Miami. Is it? Oh. It's like I've been kind I've of seeing the previews that. of it, and yeah. I was a little... It, I do, did you see, uh, what was it, The Black Prophet? That no, I, that just came out today. Yeah, today. So. Oh, I, I saw, I've seen I the previews of that. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah, but, but I watched that today. But one night in Miami, it was good. It is it, there? There is a story. It's true, where um, uh, Muhammad Ali was fighting in uh, in Miami against uh, was it Joe Frazier, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. and uh, he won the championship that night. Well, mm-hmm. there that night with him. Was Mah- was uh, Malcolm X, okay? Because the next day he came out as a Muslim, but it was Malcolm X, and uh, his a friend of his that he had named Sam Cook was there. He was a singer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Jim Brown, the football player, mm-hmm. and he yeah. was the uh, ringside announcer for the fight. Huh. And after the fight, they all got together, and it's in a documentary on Sam Cooke. It actually happened. Jim Brown talks about it. They went to a hotel in a black neighborhood, rented a room, and all sat around all night talking. Well, nobody knows what they talked about. Nobody's ever talked about what they talked about. But what this film is, is imagining what they did talk about. And it's hmm. a really good movie. Hmm. The performances are exquisite. And the history, taking a little piece of history out and making it into a story, wonderful. I didn't, when I first saw it, I didn't think this had happened. And then I went back and watched a documentary on Sam Cooke, and there's Jim Brown saying, and then we went over to this hotel, the four of us, and stayed there all night talking with each other, mm-hmm. you know. So if, if you want to see a great movie, it's really a good movie. Okay, I think Dan had his hand up first, and then Jason. Okay, okay. Dan. Uh, yeah, well, uh I might have forgotten what I was going to say before, but, but who here has seen uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? That's a really good. It's okay. Well, I thought that was good. It's okay. It's okay. It's, I, I, I like think it. it's not great, but it's okay. It's, you know, I liked it. It wasn't. Man, Chadwick Boseman's final role, man. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he, yeah. he killed it, didn't he? I acted in that play like 20 years it, ago. Yeah, he killed it. Stage. He gil- killed it way before that. He killed it 
when he did uh, when he played um, uh, the the uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Thurgood Marshall when he did Thurgood, uh, yeah. terrific job. Yeah. I mean, this was all before you know Black, Black Panther. Pants, yeah. And uh, what else did he do? He did one, he, 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 he played James Brown in the movie about James Brown. And he played uh, the baseball player too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Yeah. yeah so he a... he's been, he was around doing some really good stuff. And it, what's it, the actor's name? Chad Chad Boseman. Boseman. Yeah. Oh, here comes Trucker Steve again. He was obviously having trouble. And you could on. tell while watching watching Ma Rainey that he was getting skinny, man. You could tell. Yeah. Yeah. But so I was gonna say I understand Dan a lot more. I finally watched that hillbilly Ellie or LG. Whatever it was. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know something that is an absolute that is an absolutely terrible movie. Except for I one thought thing. I didn't think it was that except, bad. You know, it, maybe well, because you guys downgraded for my one, expectations no, of it so it, much. It was a terrible film was except for one thing. Glenn Close in that picture is terrific. I thought Amy Adams did a great job too. Yeah. Yeah. The performances the, the vastly outweigh the film. Close. I thought but, it was. Yeah, it was. It was basically Meryl like Street. a glorified TV movie, I would think. You know. Well, I thought Meryl Streep was in that movie. No. 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 Glenn Close. Glenn like Close. It. Yeah. No. You thought it, it was, was because funny. it was somebody. I Dan was in that movie. It took me ten <laughs> minutes to figure out who the woman was. That it was Glenn Close. Did you see this movie, Kevin? At all? Uh, no. Okay, he's nodding his head. No. Uh, no. No. Say, I no. thought Dan was in the movie. <laughs> Seen any movies lately that you like? Me, no. I'm, I'm, I don't watch. I don't watch a lot of movies. Really? I, I don't watch a lot of movies. I do. I end up watching two or three, and then I stop watching them for another two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I. Anybody been, what? Anybody, anybody been watching this? Uh, this movie. It's a Danish movie about this. Uh, no, a, a movie about the the guy that built the. Uh, the uh, submarine and he murdered the journalist. It's a like a Danish movie. It's called yeah. The Investigation on. I think it's on HBO Max. Yeah. I've been watching I, that. I, I, I watched a movie last yeah. night that was one of the most depressing movies I've seen, and I hate movies that beat me up. I just hate them, and it was called A Nomad Land with Frances McDormand. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not good. All, all about this woman living in her car. Or I thought you were gonna say it's called Marjorie. In her van. <laughs> no, it was called Nomad Land, and uh, it's all about people live in their cars. Li now. People live in their yeah. cars, yeah. But I mean, just What's unrelent like, just unrelentingly depressing. Yeah. And I'm going. I hate movies that beat me up. You yeah. know, um, a big car or small. Trucker You're Steve, I bet that you don't get to see. You don't get to see a lot of movies, do you, Trucker Steve, or do you get to watch them in your truck? I got Netflix. Oh, you have Netflix. Okay. Uh, and I got a Blu-ray player, so I got. Oh, so you're you're good to go. Yeah. 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 I just saw Did Rocky. You just, Brown? you just saw Rocky. What? The movie or the dog? No, the dog. <laughs> oh, okay. Up. Yeah, yeah. He's been popping. Yeah, there yeah. he is. He's, he's there. It's kind of like uh, like. Uh, ah, the movie Rocky was horrible. There's Rocky. No, uh, Rocky was good when it came out, but when you watch it now, you see the punches, and they totally miss. It's, oh yeah, uh, that yeah. was a very <laughs> cheaply. Back at some of those it was a very special effects. That film was made on the cheap. Anyway, oh, yeah. good night. First of all, to Ray Renati and his dog. What's it? What's the dog's name? Ray. <laughs> Foxy. Foxy. Mom. Foxy. Foxy. And and good night to Trucker Steven, his dog, Rocky. Rocky. And good night to Ray, Brian Neary and his daughter, Fufu. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, thank you so much tonight. And Tony and uh, Blanche, thank you for being with us. Blanche. Uh, John Blanche. Larkin, thank you. <laughs> Thanks to Jeff Stein. Really appreciate it, Jeff, as always. Uh, Alan, good talking with you. Dan Meyer, always nice having you here. Uh, Charlie Wallace, you were terrific tonight. Everybody, just a nice group of people. I had a really good time tonight, and I hope you did too. Give everybody a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for the week. We'll be back again with a new citizen panel um, 
Monday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with the pop-up show, and then be back here at 10.30 next Tuesday night, same time, 10.30, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, and please, be safe out there, wear a mask. Good night, everybody. See you later.